G'day, welcome back to the channel. I'm on a bit of a roll at the moment, so I want to keep the momentum going and get straight back into the booth. Alright, so for all those that are following on from last episode, I tackled the hinges of the door and that was really successful. So I'm going to stick with that method and refine it slightly, do the other side of the door. Now I'm getting back onto the, uh, the body work on the main shell of the ute and that means I'm back in the booth, back on the body filler and back refining my methods to try and get a really nice smooth finish before I go to uh, 2K Primer. So, so I dropped into Perros in Bendigo and got a few things that I've been wanting to get for a while. Basically, I should have got this weeks ago, if not months ago. And this is guide coat, powdered guide coat. So this is what I'll do to powder on the panel. And this will show all the, all the lows that I can't see with the naked eye. And um, I was using Etch Primer and just spraying that as a dusting and coat, but this is the proper way to do it. So if you haven't got any of this and you're trying to find those lows, give this a crack. I'm yet to use it, but I have seen it used on uh, on YouTube and it looks like it does a really good job. It's basically just oxide, I think, powdered oxide. I've just got some other, some tape and some more applicators, you know, drop sheets. One thing I did see was a filler mixing board and essentially, Every time I'm doing some filler on that pellet board, I've got to clean it with metho, you know, or you can wait for it to dry and then crack it off. But I've only had one, so it's always a pain in the ass to clean it every time I applicate it. So this is really good because you basically, it's got um, 100 sheets. Each time you do a filler, mix it up, you just tear that off, throw it in the bin, and um, you're clean, ready to go for the next one. So it saves heaps of time and heaps of cleaning up and heaps of muck on your fingers. So. This will be really handy to uh, do the rest of the body with. Okay, so that's it, so let's get into it. All right, so we're back in Zabuth and straight away, even though that's covered by a side mirror, that needs to be hammer and dollied. There's no point even applying body filler on that. And you can see, this is actually perfect light to show the highs and the lows in this door at the top. It's a bit hard, it's a bit hard at the moment because there's some um, shading of guide coat and stuff over that. Um, but yeah, you can see all the three layers of um, filler that I've got, I've sort of ironed that out nicely. I've just got to sand these last little sections and then we'll run this spline over it with the guide coat and we'll see how we're going there. This door gap now is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. It's probably a tiny bit tight at the base, but uh, I'm gonna leave it. And so those hinges are just holding that there beautifully now that's not I'm, I'm confident that's not going to go anywhere the sill needs to be refined again i might just do a complete skim across that uh spent a bit of time on this section but this needs to be gone over again and this whole top area including this it's hard at the moment because that it's got guide coat on it as well so it's making it look like it's actually high and low but it's it isn't it isn't um but you can see there's some highs and lows there, or just lows, along where those tarp tonneau cover plugs are. I'm keeping the tonneau cover. I know a lot of people don't like it. I want to keep it sort of old school because I like that whole, you know, even though it's going to be a sort of a retro mod to a certain extent, it's keeping it stock. Um, and I like that, you know. I'm going to put some side strips on it as well. They're probably the same style. The 82's got a thinner one, not like the big Kingswood ones, which are rare as hen's teeth now and probably go for around about two and a half grand if you can find them. Um, I'm just going to go the the 82 stripe, which was actually glued on, I'm pretty sure, from factory. They didn't have clips. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to just maybe try and do a bit of hammer and dolly work behind those sections. Uh, especially there and yeah we'll just do that and then get onto the filler this quarter panel there I'd like to say that it's um, ready to go but I'm thinking I can 
You see the low there already. But it's a hell of a lot better than what it was, that's for sure. All right. Well, enough talking. I'm just going to get straight into it and start to feather it all out. All right, so that is my first go with the guide coat and the spline. And I really just, yeah, spent some time going over it right from edge to edge and uh, made sure that uh, taking most of the highs off. And yeah, that, they are the lows. So you can see that's got some bare metal there. So it's clearly a low because that's um, pretty much the level it wants to be. So yeah, I need to fill there and there and along there as well. So got a low near the edge of the door, a bit of a low there, and then just lows from all my hammer and dolly work, work along here. One there, slight. This was a high, but I've hammered it in since so the low now. Um, and then I'll put some, just blanket that. So it's, we're not going to get the same issue as I had on the door where you'll start to see this patch. You're better off just having a, skim right along so you don't get that um so yeah i mean it's still a bit of work to go but at least it's it's given me an idea of where to apply this body filler so that i'm not doubling up on areas i don't need to um so i'm going to now apply the body filler scuff back the epoxy that i uh, need to and um wait to dry and give it another go try and get at nights to try and get this uh, quarter panel sorted it's just a, a can of worms when you start you chase and you and you're always sanding highs and lows trying to get back but I finally get it to a point where I'm happy with uh, this quarter panel this passenger side of the Ute has been a lot worse than the driver's side um, 
especially that door. I've spent an enormous amount of time getting that door lined up with that quarter panel and also smoothed out. So I'm now working my way along the roof line. I'm getting all those last 10 percenters. Um, I've got myself a new mask. Unfortunately, the 3M um, is uh, filters are out. So I've got this, uh, this P2 filters. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a, I don't know. I don't know how the uh, how good they are. So anyway, I've got another mask on order, but I'm going to have to do it with this mask today. I've still got a fair bit of work to go, so I'm just going to keep going around, filling all these little lows in that I can. Um, I've just noticed there's a little dint on the back tailgate there. You can see, so I'm going to pull that out. Yeah, guide coat. I didn't guide coat the other side of the year, so I'm going to do that as well. So you know, I'll probably find a few more there. So hopefully, I'll get around to doing the 2K today. But fingers crossed. Okay, so it's been a while since I've uh, filmed anything, but I've just been going over and over and over the whole body, refining, putting guide coat, refining, sanding back, guide coat, until I've got rid of, uh, yeah, all the lows and pretty much with the spline, not leaving any dark areas. So yeah, there's a few areas that are bare metal that are just flush um, with the body filler. So the primer will cover them up, uh, but you can't actually feel anything with your hand as you're running it over the panel. So I've made sure that I've retained this banana line on both sides of the quarter panel. Uh, initially I'd had put too much filler there and it was actually hiding that, that line. So yeah, that's one thing I could suggest is very important to try and retain. And now I'm just going over. <clears throat> I was just about to get ready to tape up and get ready for the uh, prime, 2K primer and then I realized I better check over it to check pinholes. So I've been going over with, just normally with my eyes and I couldn't see anything. So I've got this light here, spotlight, and I've just been shining it up like that. And that sort of basically reveals any deep scratches or pinhole imperfections that you can't see with your naked eye. And then I'm just going around with um, 180 on a soft pad and the areas that uh yeah i've put some fine filler really fine filler to fill those pinholes and i'm just going through and just basically sanding that slight skim coat off uh to fill in those those holes these little holes are from the um the eyelet holes for the tarp plugs so i'll eventually drill those through but i've just sort of bogged over those for now um, yeah, so you can see there's quite a few pinholes. I've used a finer filler to, uh, to put, it, put those uh, pinholes or fill those pinholes. But I have noticed there's, there is some deeper scratches every now and then that I've seen that I've, that I've missed. So I'm going through and I'm just going to try and buff those out a bit more and hopefully um, with the 180 and hopefully the 2K will cover them up. They're not super deep, but you can still see See some scratches where you'll, uh, for instance, there, you know, but uh, if you ran your hand over that, you can't actually feel anything. So the 2K will cover those up. Yeah, run over the roof. Um, this door's really, really flush now, really straight. So I'm happy with that. Clean the booth out. I've worked on this door as well. <clears throat> I'm just going to go through, check all these for pinholes. I could have done a coat of epoxy because there's a fair bit of metal showing through. Um, but the 2K primer is basically the same kind of thing and I'm happy to do that. Just put it straight on. Huge amount of work. The roof's uh, also been done, but I won't turn the rotisserie right now. So I'm going to spend about probably another half an hour just to go over, do all the pinholes, get rid of all the, buff out all the deeper scratches with this hand pad. I'm not using the orbital sander. Just doing it everything by hand because I don't want to risk uh, creating any gouges or anything at this point. And then I'm going to do a final clean prep, wash, and then I'm going to um, tape it up and then it's ready to go.
So it's all taped up, cleaned, prep washed, ready to go. So I've just clamped the doors so I can open, uh, open them up and sort of do inside the door jams as well. I've done a little bit of filler work. There's a couple of little areas on the tops of the doors. I've just noticed that I'll uh, have to get to once it's primed and I'll just patch it up. It's just dragging on forever. So I need to get it in. I just need to get it covered first with one, uh, with the first few coats of the 2K and then we'll, once I start rubbing it back, I'll get an idea of the areas that I need to patch up and, uh, and fix because it's so hard to see when it's so patchy like this. Um, but it's all clean and uh, when I was prep washing it, I did see, you know, how straight it was in those uh, areas that I've been working on. So I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to look pretty good. I'll just have to go around and fill little pinholes and things like that once it's uh, in 2K and I can get more of an idea. So I'm going to leave the back exposed as it won't be too much overspray and then I'll just, I've got to sand that back anyway before I do the wrapper liner so that's not going to be a big drama. And those guards I think should be fine. They'll cop a little bit of overspray but I've got to fully sand them anyway so I'm just going to leave them there. So now it's time to uh, start mixing paint up get my new mask on. I've got a, uh, a new mask that I've got a full face and we'll get painting. Is. I'm happy you've managed to keep that nice banana line there. That was actually a bit of luck and a bit of uh, manipulation because I there wasn't a lot of lows in that area anyway, so I didn't actually put much filler over it. But you can see how easy it would be to lose. You know, you start to think that this is a low. A lot of people fill that in and then you have a nice, like a really flat quarter panel at the rear and lose that line completely. So happy with that. And overall, I'm pretty happy. I'm, it's not perfect. There's definitely some little highs and lows, or sorry, lows. I knew that there was one here. I was trying to sort of get rid of it, but uh, I just had to move on. But now that I've actually got it in high fill and it's a nice and even, I'll just go through and really sort of find the uh, the areas that need attention and there's a couple of little lows there that I missed. So yeah, I'll just use some fine filler, get rid of those and then um, prime over the top again. Just keep doing that until I really, you can see that line there as well. It's also got a slight banana. So the sort of the line sort of goes like this into the corner or into the center where the door and the quarter panel meet and then bananas back to the rear those are the two lines to try and maintain while you're doing your body filler and um, I've managed to do that except for that little low there but uh, no I'm pretty happy yeah considering I haven't gone the, uh, the polyester surfacer you can see it still hasn't fully dried yet so you can see those banding marks for the primer, but all in all, that door is pretty much spot on. And you know how much work was done on this one. That was completely removed, that whole area, and welded across, so now you wouldn't even know. There's a couple of little undulations along here which should not happy about, but so hard, so hard to pick them. Um, so until I get this on, I really was flying blind. There's a mark there that I'm going to have to level out. But, you know, this is all part of it. That's why it's high build. 
just keep sanding now with your higher grits and iron out all the little imperfections bit by bit. You can see that uh, still see some banding there, but that was a repair, as you all know. The rear quarter there, so that's really good as well. Happy with that. You still got the wheel arch going there. Banana still here. I don't know whether these are just these are just dark areas where the paint hasn't dried yet, so I don't I won't know until it's fully cured whether these are and sand, whether there's some lows there. But you can see all in all, slowly getting there. It's really just a matter of building it up now. So yeah, that's it. Done. All right, so that's it for this episode. Finally got on the, the 2K primer on. Just quickly though, <clears throat> um, I'm gonna get out of this booth because it's pretty fumey and that uh, brings me to this contraption here. I wanted to upgrade my mask because I wasn't really happy with that, uh, my eyes being exposed to that um, 2K primer. Um, so I bought this uh, full face unit off eBay. It was about $69, $69 I think. It's a rip off of the, um, of the 3M version, but uh, I did a, which is around about $260, I think. So anyway, I decided to um, do a little bit of a hack and you can get the 3M uh, 6000 series uh, filters, which is still good for 2K. Um, and you can actually buy this and then apply these on it. And so when I put this on, I couldn't smell and with these combined with these filters. The filters that came with it, I could smell fumes through this uh, unit. As soon as I put these on, the 3M um, proper 3M filters, I couldn't smell anything. This, this unit's actually really good, um, as long as you got the filters to go with it. So it was protecting my eyes, I could see better and I wasn't getting that uh, the fumes and the dangerous part particles in my eyes, which is, which is pretty important when you start playing with this stuff. So yeah, when you're spending you know, a good hour in the booth and this isn't a professional booth, you really want to start looking after your, your lungs. And um, I can't wait to finish all this so that I don't have to go and expose myself any more than I need to. So anyway, that's it. Uh, I know it's been a month. So yeah, it was a lot of work, a lot more work than I thought to really to hone these lines is, and it's still not perfect. Polyester surfacer might help you along a little bit faster. I decided not to go that route because uh, I was advised not to unless you're experienced with it because of shrinkage. Um, I'm still pretty happy with where I'm at with it and I'm just going to start refining now. <clears throat> start refining, as I mentioned, with the body filler, reapply those uh, areas that need to um, be reapplied with the primer and then we'll just start thinking about getting it off this rotisserie and back onto the chassis. I've got a few things that I've got to do before I do that. And I'll give you an engine update as well. I know the engine is actually underway at uh, night engines. And I'm pretty excited to start, uh, you know, potentially if we can get over the border, go and pick that up and bring it back. I'd love to get it on the chassis first before I put this on because it's just going to be a little bit more painful. But I've still got to do the trans um, and I've still got to do brake lines, fuel lines, all that kind of stuff on the chassis. So there's a lot more to do. I'm getting busy. Um, figuring out what to start next. I'm just glad I've got this on in 2K Primer and um, it's just one step closer now. I'm really excited to start getting this thing back on the chassis. So thanks for following along. If you haven't, please subscribe, follow from the start. If you wanna have a look at some uh, updates in between, I've always posting videos on Instagram, just um, story videos. So if you wanna see what I'm up to, check that out at Barnsley's underscore builds and you'll find, um, find out what I'm up to in between episodes. So until next time, see you later.